Alright, this is going to be episode number 16 in our video series going from a noob to an ASM coder. So we made it pretty far in our ASM journey. We're at the expert level threads now. And the first uh, thread out of the expert tier level, which we're going to cover in this episode, is how to make codes execute on set timed intervals. So this has been requested, this was a requested thread for quite some time and I finally, finally got around to adding it. So this would be something like, excuse me, if you have like an invisible code and you want it to cycle on and off automatically, like be on one second, then be off the very next second, and then repeat forever, or you want it like every five seconds or like ten seconds, this is how you would do it. So essentially, um, for this example, we have hamsters invisible racing code <clears throat> and we're going to want it to only be executed when the seconds of the race timer is an odd number give me some water <clears throat> okay so now that's what we want uh, to do so obviously we'll be working with this code and when you're doing this um, method of making codes execute on set intervals you're gonna have two ASM's you have the code that you're gonna be wanting to modify so even if it's a 32-bit RAM write like this you're gonna transform it into an ASM write and then you'll have your second ASM which has to be some code that deals with the race timer right so for this one we're gonna deal we're gonna use for the race timer bullies millisecond display modifier code which you can see by default is a 32-bit RAM write which will transform that also into an ASM code so you're probably saying to me well Vega this is for milliseconds you describe that we're dealing with the seconds of the race timer well the good thing about this code is when the static memory address for this code gets executed register 28 uh, holds the seconds value for the race timer uh, even though this code modifies the milliseconds, that's just for register 5 that it gets modified. So remember how I talked about in STARS positional shared item code, uh, register 25 at the shared item code address when it gets executed um, contains the position value of whoever's picking up the box at that time. So one thing to note when you're making ASM codes take a look at registers 14 through 31 they might contain some values that could be useful for whatever code you're working on so for our case the millisecond display modifier code R28 which is not related at all to the default instruction contains the seconds value that we need to use okay so going back to the thread we are going to work, uh, we're going to make the ASM out of Bully's millisecond modifier code first. And the great thing about uh, here in the thread is he has a default compiled instruction right here. So we can just go ahead and throw that in our Python com uh, decompiler and decompile it and get the default instruction. Or you can use the method as booting up the game. And once it boots up, you can pause the emulation, go to the address and code view, and you actually get the instruction right there or you can just um, get it off like a hex editor put the compiled form in a decompiler there's so many ways you can do it to get the default instruction but once you get the default instruction we can start writing our first ASM so this is the default instruction of bullies uh, code right here and in this 32-bit RAM write all he did was replace the value in R5 but we're not concerned with this default instruction at all or what's in R5 so we're going to go ahead, because of that, we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to store the seconds value in the exception vector area, and our other ASM, which is going to be using hamster's code, will load it, and then whenever the seconds value is an odd number, we'll make the invisible racing code execute. If it's an even number, we'll make it not execute. So that is the goal here. Let's just set up the upper 16 bits of the exception vector area. Obviously, we're register safety protocol. We can safely use R5 because its value is going to get wiped anyway by the default instruction. Let's store the entire word value of R28 to the exception vector area. We'll just use 8,1398. And we'll just store the entire word just because. Uh, it's safer to do that because if the seconds value decides to exceed a byte or exceed a half word, 
we'll just store the whole word just to be super safe. So there's our first ASM. We're done. So at this point in time, once this first ASM gets executed, equals our seconds value at that uh, that address contains our seconds value in a word format, if you will. So now let's make our second ASM. So we need to get the default instruction off of this, which I went ahead and just, or we all need that copy pasted yet. I went ahead and went to the Dolphin Memory Engine and went right to that address. And so you can just type it in the compiled bytecode form in Python and decompile it. Give me a sip of water. Okay, so there's our default instruction, but I have it in a better format and hex format, if you will, for me already off the thread, which I like to view because I don't like decimal. This is our default instruction <clears throat> at hamster's static memory address for his code. So we're just going to follow standard safety protocol. Set the exception vector area, load up the seconds value. And we're using our little tips and tricks of a register and a register because we don't need to retain the original R12 value that we initially set in this instruction. So we go ahead and just keep that instead of having to use like R11 or whatnot. So at this moment in time, after this instruction right here gets executed, equals our seconds value or what was in R28 from the first ASM. So that's important to know. So now we need to find a way to whether or not this number is even or odd because we want the code to execute when it's odd. Um, I'm not going to go too much into binary, but essentially I'll supply this instruction right here, clear left word immediate. This is what it looks like. And this will clear all the far left, all the first 31 out of 32 bits of the word value in register 12. So this will leave the very far right hand bit of the word and if it's zero it's even if it's one or odd. So I'm not going to try to go into too much detail about binary. Obviously if we only have one binary bit left we know it can only be zero or one and that's how we can easily tell whether it's even or odd. So just know this is the instruction you can use to decide whether or not, whether or not a number is even or odd. In the pro level threads I really go uh, deep into detail about binary and bits, but that will be put off for another episode, but just know you can use this instruction. So we don't need to keep retaining R12's value every time, so we can do the register and the register type of technique, if you will. Um, now you're probably thinking, okay, we can compare it to zero and work from there, but also in our ASM tips and tricks episode, I talked about certain instructions have a record feature where you get a free use of compare word immediate with the destination register to zero. Well luckily clear left word immediate this instruction right here we have the record feature available so we don't even need this. And then just add in your conditional branch if it was zero the number was even. If it's odd aka it's either going to be zero or one if it's one if it's not equal to zero we know the number was odd and therefore we can execute the code. So we got the default instruction of Hamster's um, address right here. This is the instruction he used to replace to make the code execute. We'll put in Python, get the, the actual instruction decompiled, and we see it's load immediate register 0 with the value of 1. Go back to our text editor. So if the number was odd, aka this conditional branch will not be taken, we put that here and then we just put our label name right here uh, code will execute and take a, a moment of time to notice how I was able to get the branch route really optimized so if you want a little tip right here if you're working with a default instruction that's a loading instruction and you want to make sure your branches are optimized when you're doing just like a single conditional branch uh, chances are you want the default instruction at the top so check it out here's what happens the first uh, ASM code gets ex executed we have our seconds value here in the exception vector area R0 gets whatever value it's supposed to get first why do we do this 
uh, for this loading default instruction well if we don't want the code to execute we just branch right here or when the code's not supposed to execute excuse me the branch the conditional branch will be taken and we just skip down to the label and r0's value is retained so you see how I was able to optimize the branching by putting the loading default instruction at the top so let's just go over this this gets executed we load the seconds value we clear all the bits except for the very far right hand bit so the number the value in the register is either going to be 0 or 1 no matter what if it's 0 that means the race timer was even right so we want the code to not execute so we skip this instruction we go down to the label name and r0's value gets retained so the code will not execute so it's important to understand that every time when this ASM gets called on and executed when this instruction gets executed at this particular moment in time it's already set up to where the code by default will not execute so let's go over this again boom boom we load the seconds value clear all the bits except for the final bit the far right hand bit let's say it is odd this time the race timer the seconds value is odd this conditional branch will not be taken we instead replace our zeros value that was given by the default instruction and we replace it with one therefore therefore the code will now execute so I know I probably went over that a little fast um, just rewatch the video if I did but this is just the most basic method you can use to make codes execute on set intervals obviously there's downsides to using this race timer because it bullies code the race timer only works in TT's and verses it doesn't work in battle and if you have something where you want to execute uh, all the time in the game doesn't matter whether or not you're in a race you're going to need to find some static memory address uh, slash instruction that's res that has some register value that can will have some seconds value you need that can be executed anywhere in the game not just in the race so if we take those two ASM's and we compile them up into NTSCU region we'll have this code so let me go and shut down Dolphin I really wish, wish it would just force shut down automatically uh, let's just turn off all these codes we'll add our compiled code that we made let's just put a random name doesn't really matter okay we're gonna launch the game give it a second and we're also gonna go ahead and launch the dolphin memory engine we're gonna go ahead and do a versus race just to show that this code is a working code and wasn't just some random source some junk junk source I was just making up and you never know what you, you could get accused of these days right so <laughs> alright so let's use Waluigi Waluigi we could just use Luigi circuit start the race and watch what happens whenever the seconds of the race timer goes to an odd number check it out on off on off going back to our dolphin memory engine let's check something out really quick let's check out the exception vector area look at that check that out so there you go live action and memory of what our code is actually doing alright guys that's pretty much it there is a really good in-depth video slash tutorial of how to make codes execute on set timed intervals just let you view that for, again for a second alright guys that is it thank you for watching